Now what we have here is your incoming gas, so you've got an isolator either side of your meter and of course your meter. This then goes directly up into the plant room which is directly above us. So for straightforward easy isolation down here you've got your two valves. There is a second um, electrical valve upstairs in the plant room which we'll get to. Then we have your incoming mains. The water straight up straight up into the plant room upstairs. You've got several pieces of equipment on this. Stopcock, double check valve, water meter, then we have an electrical isolation system in here. So if there's ever a flood, it will automatically shut the system down. It's also time control that outside of your normal working hours, uh, yet to be discussed with yourselves, this can control so there is no water allowed into the school itself. For example, 12 o'clock at night when nobody's about, this will actually shut the water system down. We're directly now in the plant room above the intake room downstairs. And you can see this is where the gas pipe actually comes up through the floor. So it follows up, straight to another isolation. Then you have your emergency lockout switch. Quite simple, it's your gas guard. If there's a gas leak, we've got various sensors around, it will actually shut this down. It's linked into the fire alarm system. There is an, an emergency cutoff button here. There is actually one near the door entrance as well. And let's hope this works. Gas is all switched off. So we come to the other end of the plant room now. And if we follow the cold water down, yet again, it splits. First of all, we have a supply down. And I'll explain all this shortly. But this is for the, um, the heating. This way brings itself around, drops down, yet again, more isolation, pressure reduction again to equalise it all, and this then supplies the tank. So we'll go back to where the mains comes in, the boosted water, drops down, straight away its first isolation point, double check valve, and that is the top up. Now it's an auto top up, it will keep a check on the system to make sure that it's always level. If uh, we have a leak on the system, it will close it down, set the alarm off if it uh, registers a quick drop in pressure. So it will actually shut it down. As it progresses, as the building ages and the central heating system's working, there's various automatic air valves on the site releasing the air. As they do, this will keep it topped up and will keep it, uh, maintain its pressure. Follow it through, it then connects straight onto the central heating system. And as you can see all the way through, this is where it tops up. So that's the cold water. From here on in, we're now onto the central heating. Inside the switch panel, we have the external lighting, fire alarm, kitchen, uh, DB3, 2 and 1, which are the, the th three wings, which are A, B and C. Uh, these are the uh, MCCBs which feed out to the localised distribution boards within those spaces. We also have the auxiliary uh, pumpless, pump sprinkler um, supply which feeds the heater and the lighting in the actual pump house. We also have the PV array and the uh, plant room DB. Uh, at the bottom we've obviously got the surge protection and this is the main incoming isolator. Um, as explained, um, to uh, to disconnect the entire school, simply push down it firmly and positively on the main incoming MCCB. And again, to re-engage, if you come down, engage it upwards, but make sure it's um, positive and firm to make sure that the breaker uh, goes into its on position. The uh, panel is equipped with uh, meters, 
for the relevant areas down each side. Uh, this is the main incoming one. You've got the external lighting and then you've got PV, kitchen, etc. on this side. In each of the classrooms, we have a CO2 sensor, uh, the breathing buildings, which is actually this sensor here. This will pick up if the CO2 levels go too high and it will start bringing in fresh air. Okay, now I'm gonna get up this ladder and show up. This control box up here is the main control for the two systems. This one is the master. The second grill over there is the slave. So this master controls the two. Now, at the moment, we've got it out so you can actually see all the control systems in there. It's got a pre-programmed system in, but we have an override button. So if the teacher feels that she needs to bring some fresh air into it, flick of a switch, you'll see the light comes on. You should hear, there you go. I'll go up so you can get a bit, the fans have now kicked in. Okay, can you hear that? So whilst that's flashing, you know that they're getting fresh air into it. Once you feel comfortable, you can actually switch it off, or the system will automatically do it itself. It's a coded system, four digit code. At the minute it's just set for the default, which is uh, five, six, seven, eight. It's a case of when you want to set your alarm, enter in your codes and it will come up with do you want to arm the system, click the tick, that will start to go. As you can see we've got an intermittent tone, that's because there's different devices that are activated at the moment because there's too many people in the building. So if this happens, enter in your code again and press the tick to cancel the alarming of the system. Go to the relevant areas, i.e. if there's a door open or someone's still in the room, check what the fault was, close the door, come back, enter your code again, hit the tick, and that should arm your system if everything's all good and okay. Use your mouse that you've got here, right click once, brings up the menu, you go down to playback, left click, uh, you get a pattern and we'll find that out for you. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, if you right click on that, you can enter your password, which at the minute is just set to QTEC, which is with a capital Q. T -E o. And enter that. That will bring you to your next menu. Now, this is where you select which camera you want as of where anything might have happened. So at the minute, we're just on the rear roof. You come down to your calendar, you can select a day of which wherever your event happened. And then at the bottom here, you get your time scale. Now if you use the rollerball on the mouse, once you've clicked on, you can drag it around, find what time anything happened. But this is the Ghent by Honeywell fire alarm system. Um, when the alarm does go off, it will indicate the zone and it will come up with a fire or a fault if you've got a faulty detector. Um, simply, when the alarm does go off, to reset the alarm, you press the reset button. Before doing that, you can silence the alarms and actually silence the buzzer on the panel itself. Um, on the display, it will tell you exactly where the, uh, where the fault is or the fire is, so you can go and check that area or check to see if the, um, the detector is damaged or needs replacing. It will also give you a printout on this receipt. Uh, anything, anything that you do with this panel, it will, it will print out um, anything to do with the system, really. Uh, and it's, that's, that's pretty much it. It's just the three buttons. Um, so if I actually set this alarm. Right, so that's reset. If I set it off. So we go silent alarms. That will turn everything off. Silence the buzzer, that stops the buzzing. And as you can see, it's printing out to tell you exactly what's going on. First things first, you have a stop button by your, your, the entrance to your plant room. If you come into the plant room and you find everything's off, that'll be the first thing to check. The only light that would be on at that point would be your panel of live light. Should you want to check that any of the other lights are actually working or, or whether any of them have failed, you have a lamp test facility which you can press. 
it will display all the lamps that are working for you. Um, should any of them be out, they can obviously be reported to your same contractor or ourselves in the first year. Um, if we move along to the fire alarm, your system is uh, linked in with the fire alarm. Should you uh, have a fire in here or, or, or the fire alarm go off for any reason, the system will automatically shut down. During the periods of a fire alarm test, you have a fire override switch, which is next to it with a key in it. Generally, it will need to be in the off position, which activates the fire alarm system, uh, so it links it in with the fire alarm. During periods when you do a fire alarm test, you need to come up here, override the switch, which basically gives you, uh, overrides the safe gas um, fire alarm safety system, allowing the heat and controls to continue functioning during a fire alarm test. Once the test has been carried out, return the switch to the off position and you've reactivated the interlink with the fire alarm. If we move along to the gas safety system. Within the plant room you've got a gas safety controller um, which is over by the gas valve that monitors um, levels of carbon monoxide and gas within the room. Should any of those um, increase to unacceptable levels the system will lock out. The unit on the, the boiler guard on the wall will start screaming and, and, and making a horrible noise at you. It will open. This displays a generic schematic of the plant layout. You have the two boilers, you have your primary system, secondary system, and down below this is the hot water circuit. If something is flashing red, it means there's a fault. Um, if everything is green, it means it's working. If it's greyed out, it means it's turned off. So to view, so very simply here, uh, we have a pressure switch. The button alongside it is green, which says that it's good, it's okay. If there's a pressure fault, that would turn red. This is a pump here that is green. This means this pump is running and that one is off. It's an automatic uh, duty standby changeover once a week. Um, so this will be, the next week, this one will be green and that one will be off. If either of these are flashing red, it means there's a fault and you have to go and look and find out what the problem is. And to view a temperature, you see alongside these little sensors, you have a, a, what we call an inspector. If you just hover over the inspector, it displays the temperature. If you click, it will stay in place. To get rid of it, you just close, hit the cross on the top right. Emergency light root finder. Right, so this is the this is the screen for the for the root finder, and if we click on it, it should come up all okay. Um, if we do have any problems, it will come up. So what it is this screen monitors every uh, emergency light inside and outside the uh, the new build. Um, and to go into it, we click on engineer mode, and we type in the password, which in this case is one 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 one. Right, so as we get into the main screen, this allows us to view all devices. So if we click on that, so it comes up loop one. Now there's two loops. Loop one is downstairs, loop two is upstairs. Uh, loop one, so at the moment, device is actually the, the A type A1E light, which is the light in this room. Um, if you can see on here, everything is fine with this light fitting. So everything, so circuit, emergency lamp, battery, the functional test timing, everything is fine with this light. If anything wants to go wrong with this light, it would shine up straight away on this panel, uh, notifying whoever needs to. Uh, been carried out, you must open this top valve. It's imperative this valve is opened. Failure to do so will render the system unoperational. and re-lock it. This system is now back to its operational state. So we've recorded the date, we've rec recorded the before pressure, we've recorded the after pressure, we've recorded the time taken for the gong to ring, the gong works satisfactorily, stop valve is secured open, all other water supply valves are open. 
water storage tank full and physically open the hatch and check the water level is full. We have just done the weekly test so therefore water is seeping back into the tank. This will stop once water level has reached its full mark. Mm -hmm.